What's up guys, Grandmaster Igor Smirnov is here from the Remote Chess Academy. Today I'd like to share with you a really cool game played by Vladimir Kramnik, where he shows really well how you should be developing a crushing attack against an opponent's king. Also, that was a really beautiful combination, but before we get into it, let me ask you, how are you guys doing? I understand that because of coronavirus and the quarantine in many countries the situation is a little bit unpleasant and yet I hope that chess also helps you to spend this time doing something nice such as playing chess. For example, yesterday I was really happy to receive a message from a student uh, who shared with me the success of his daughter Sophia who just crossed 1800 rating and certainly I want to pass my congratulations uh, to them both and also guys I really hope that you also take this time to do something nice productive to take care of your family your health and also to play chess and to improve it anyway let me know in the comments down below how do you spend this time did you get any new better results in chess let me know and meanwhile let's get into the game that I promised you earlier it's the game played between two grandmaster the white grandmaster is Yudasin Leonid and the black uh, player is Vladimir Kramnik. We can see the Sicilian defense plate here, the so-called Sveshnikov variation, really popular nowadays. And here White decided to go knight d5, one of the ways for White to handle the Sveshnikov variation of Sicilian defense. And here after this exchange on d5, which was forced, as otherwise the White's knight, one of them, would jump to e7, to c7, sorry, attacking both the king and the rook, therefore black has to trade off the knights and now the pawn is attacking the knight so it has to go back black decided to go to e7 white played a4 it's a prophylaxis move as otherwise black can in this case expand on the queen side by playing a6 and b5 gaining some space advantage there and so white often wants to prevent it by playing pawn to a4 black played knight f5 kind of still developing the knight and also providing more free space for his other pieces such as queen and the bishop White played pawn to c3, maybe it wasn't that much necessary, White could have just instead developed his pieces, but anyway, for now, more or less, both players are just developing their pieces, Black played pawn to g6. And this is already an interesting moment of this game. Black could have certainly just developed his bishop to e7, but he instead decided to fianchetto his bishop. And he played pawn to g6. Why did he do this? The reason is, that Kramnik already at this point understands that because he has this pawn on the e5, with no counterpart on the e-file, so he knows that he's gonna attack there, and in order to support the advancement of his e-pawn in the middle game, he will likely need to push his f-pawn forward, and that is why he wants to improve the safety of his king on the king side by bringing his bishop to g7. So it's actually a pretty wise idea, even though it looks like just a normal development move. White plays bishop e2, bishop g7, both players are continuing their development, white plays queen to b3. Let's take a moment to think about this position. How would you play here as black? Well, there are a couple of possible answers, like you can possibly kick away this time from b5 by playing pawn to a6, and it is a normal move for black to play, or black can decide to finalize his development, bring the bishop to d7, maybe bring the rooks into play, which also makes sense. But if we think about it in a little bit of a more generic way, what is the black's middle game plan here? It's one of the most common questions that students ask me, because in an opening it is more or less clear that you need to just develop your pieces somehow. And then, what are you gonna do next? This is the exact point where a lot of people struggle. They know that ideally they wish to attack, but they aren't sure exactly how you can do this. And that's why I'm, I like to just give you the exact system that you can use. So first of all, you need to decide the area of your attack. And the area is usually either the area of the board where you're stronger or the area where your opponent has certain weaknesses. In the current position, it's not that white really has some specific weaknesses and therefore black just needs to pay attention to the side of the board where he has an advantage. In this case it's this pawn on e5 with no counterpart which gives black pawn majority in the center and somewhat on the king side because this pawn is a little bit closer to the king side. Therefore black's plan would be to push this pawn forward to e4 and then either with the support of his pieces or also with the pushing of his f pawn forward to keep pushing this pawn forward. So this is the direction of the black's attack. But the next thing, of course, is that in order to make your attack successful, you gotta support your pawns 
by pieces, and that's why Black here play rook to e8. Already at this stage he prepares an advancement of this pawn by putting his rook to the e-file. White played queen b4, he's somewhat trying to take aim at the black's weak pawn on d6, and black plays pawn to e4, continuing to realize his plan. White played bishop f4, now the d6 pawn is really being attacked, so black plays bishop, d bishop e5 to not only protect this pawn on d6, but also, after this exchange, notice that black brings one more piece, closer to the center and somewhere, somewhat closer to the king side, because this rook can possibly jump to g5 or to h5 in the future and to support black's attack there. So black methodically, one by one, bringing more and more pieces into this central area of the board, somewhere closer to the center and king side. And that's the way how you should develop an attack, because you cannot really attack just um, you know, with a few pieces, you need to bring more pieces into a certain area of the board. White play rook to d1 here, and black played knight h4. And now black is ready to go into a straightforward attack with either his queen to g5 or maybe rook to g5, and so the knight takes aim at the g2 pawn which covers the king. Notice an interesting thing here. Like we discussed earlier, black has this extra pawn on e4, and even though right now black does not use this pawn directly, meaning black does not push this pawn forward, but it still plays an important role into the black's attack, because it cuts off the white's pieces. White cannot really bring his pieces to the king side, because this e4 pawn gives black space advantage on the king side and in the center, and therefore black can easily bring more pieces to the king side, while for white it's much harder to somehow bring the pieces there. For example, the white's queen cannot go to g4 because this rank is closed. The white's rook cannot go to d3 and then to g3 because this square is under the control. The white's bishop cannot go to f3 because this square is under the control of the pawn. I've drawn so many arrows here on the board so that it gets confusing. Uh, let me just get to the next moves. White played here, king to h1. You may wonder why white did not capture the pawn on d6, because white could have done this, obviously. I'm not exactly sure what Kramnik planned to do here, but I guess it was the move bishop to h3. Quite an interesting way to expose the white's king. And the idea is pretty straightforward. If the pawn goes there to h3, black can go queen g5 check, aiming to play queen g2 checkmate on the next move. Therefore white has to cover the king, but now black can go knight f3 check. Notice that the bishop is pinned, therefore the king has to go somewhere, and then black can play queen f4, threatening queen h2, checkmate. And even though the game is not over yet, white still can somehow try to protect his position, either by playing rook to h1, or maybe he try he can try a knight takes e4, complicating matters. But anyway, it looks really scary for white, and I understand why, why white player did not want to go into this variation, which looks so scary, because if white just plays... Uh, a wrong move here, he can be checkmated immediately. In the actual game, white did not capture that pawn on d6, he instead played king to h1, trying to hide his king. Black continued with queen to g5, black continues his attack, threatening queen takes g2 checkmate, white plays rook to g1, and black played another interesting move, bishop goes to g4. We know that in order to develop a successful attack, you need to bring more of your pieces closer to the area of your attack. And there are basically two ways how this can be done. The first way is when you first prepare your attack, by bringing the pieces closer, and then you go into opponent's half of the board and start attacking. But there is also the second way, which is what Kramnik is doing right here. He's bringing pieces into the attack while attacking along the way. And that is the most powerful way, because in this way you don't waste any time for preparation. You develop your attack and you bring more pieces into the attack simultaneously. White exchanged the bishops, now the black's queen is also getting a little bit closer to the king and also the rook is now ready potentially to go there along the fifth rank and support the attack. By the way, what if white captures the pawn on d6 here? Can you find the right move for black here? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it, and if you can find it, write it down in the comments below, so that you can later on compare your solution with what happened in the game. The nice move black would have played here is knight to f3. And here's the trick. If the knight is captured after queen takes f3, this is check, 
and white cannot really play rook g2, well he has to, but in this case he will lose the rook on d1 and black will continue the attack. So black will capture the rook and he'll have an additional, an extra material and he will continue his attack, therefore it is just losing for white. White cannot really do this. That's why in this game white played rook to e1, removing this rook from potential danger and also attacking the black's pawn on e4 or rather just uh, taking aim at this pawn. And here black played queen of 4, another really tricky move, because at this point white probably thought that black was a little bit too optimistic in his attack, and white just captured that pawn on d6. And at the moment it looks like everything is just great for white, because he captured the pawn, black cannot go with his rook to h5 or something like this, because this rook is pinned, and uh, also the, the black's queen cannot capture the f2 pawn, because in this case the rook on e5 will be lost, and therefore it kind of looks like white just won the pawn, imposed this pin on the rook and everything is just great that maybe black overlooked something. But let's see what Kramnik prepared here. He played knight f5 first, attacking the white's queen, therefore the queen has to go away. White played queen to c7, trying to keep this pin. And here black played pawn to e3. That was the point of the black's idea. And the point is, in case white captures this pawn by his f-pawn, the most natural move, black can actually finalize the game in two moves. Can you find them? It's a quick tactical puzzle for you. Here black can go knight g3 check, followed by rook to h5 checkmate. Pretty cool, relatively simple tactics, but anyway, it looks nice. But white certainly saw this variation, and that's why he instead took the pawn by the rook, and it still looks fairly good for white. Even though black can capture the rook with the knight, but in this case after pawn takes and black has to recapture by the queen, white still has some compensation for the exchange, he can play pawn to d6, this pawn is strong and the position remains to be unclear, but unfortunately for white, black has something else in mind. Can you find the winning shot for black here? You may even pause the video because this time the combination isn't as easy. The winning move for black was queen takes e3, really beautiful sacrifice of a queen. And the point is that after pawn takes, black can sacrifice the knight here, and after pawn takes it goes rook to h5, checkmate. A super beautiful combination, black is delivering a checkmate just with a single rook while white has such a tremendous material advantage here. Let me also for a moment make some summary for this game so that you know how you can develop an attack against an opponent's skin in this or in similar positions. When you need to decide your plan for a middle game, think about two things, where you are stronger or where your opponent has some weaknesses. This is the area of your board where you should develop an attack. And the second stage is to bring more pieces into that area, preparing your attack. In this game, Black decided that because he has this pawn on the e5 with no counterpart, he's gonna attack in the center and on the king side, and he started to bring more and more pieces into that area of the board, gradually developing his attack, which at one point became decisive and he could finalize the game with such a brilliant sacrifice. I have also one quick announcement. I'm super happy to say that I have just finalized a new course called Polislavsky Pawn Structure, where I go in depth analyzing these and similar pawn structures and showing you the typical plans for white, for black. And my goal for this course was not only to help you play this pawn structure really well for either side, because the pawn structure is really universal, you can get into something similar from a wide range of openings, but even more so my goal was to also help you to develop your strong positional understanding so that regardless of the position on the board, you know what to do, you know how to find the right plan and you know how to develop attacks successfully. If you're interested, check out the link down below or click the uh, card on the, on the screen right here so that you can get to know more information about the course and right now you can get it on some special discounts and with additional bonuses, just check out everything click the link if you are interested. I hope that you also enjoy the game and I wish that you have a great rest of the day. Take care, bye bye.